Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And what now uh, the session would be is, it would be a basically image and uh, image and media handling. So what we will see is dealing with images, audio, video, and a camera app also. So it would be a pretty interesting session for you because. I am doing a very minimal coding, but the what output you will see, there are a lot of things. I mean, I am capturing a camera, taking a pic, giving back the picture to the uh, to my activity and showing it. So even there are lots of interesting things and very, I am, that this is the power of Android. I mean, with minimal coding, you can do a lot of things. So let's start. So I'll just switch my workspace to the media workspace. So let it get load, we will take little bit of time, meanwhile what we can do is we can check out Android SDK manager. This is what I wanted to show you in a session 1. So if you see, this is the Android SDK manager, I went to windows, then Android SDK manager. Okay. So these are all versions and he, here is a corresponding API. So what you see is Android 4.2 version have API 17, similarly 4.1.2 API 16. So if you remember the chart which I had shown you in the introduction, so this is what it, it has come from. So and if you see these versions have been installed, like 4.1.2 is not installed, 4.0.3 is installed. So, you know, depending on which version you want, you can just select this and install these packages. I guess, yes, our, everything has been sorted out, it has loaded my projects. So, let us start with the first media example. So, what we will do is, uh, you must have already now familiar with the layout concept, rather in our layout, what we have is a XML files. So, this is my main XML file, the main activity. Yeah, let me just zoom it for you. Okay, this is in a portrait. Let me just change it to the landscape. Yeah. So, this is how the final output will look like, where I have two image buttons. This is little different than the buttons. I mean, if, okay, I'll just concentrate on the left side. In the form widgets, we have all this common widgets, then there are text field, layout, composite, then in images and media, we have these all widgets. So I will be basically taking these widgets, these are something you know, pretty cool widgets. So this is what you see on the screen are image buttons. So what happens is, is it is nothing but just a button with an image. So I mean, uh, you can just give a source of this image to a button. So I have, what I have done is simply dragged and dropped a button, then in a source, if you see this properties, uh, let me just, no I can't uh, do that. Okay, so right hand side, right hand side here is a source. So what it says is a drawable image button. So now you have already seen resources in a morning session, so I assume you have understood what does this drawable do for us? So I have simply copied my images in this drawable folder. So if you see, here are images available which I am using in my application. So here are the Im uh, images available. So I have just copied in all three folders, drawable, HTPI, which is for high definition, then low definition and medium. So I have already copied and I am just using it in the source. So pretty simple, just take your image, copy here, drag and drop your image button, give a source and it will automatically come. Whatever you copy in a drawable folder, if it is a form of image, then this will automatically show you that those all names. So here we have two image buttons. So what we expect is, uh, on clicking of this image button, I will show you the image view. If you see this left hand side, the first widget is an image view. So what image view does is, you have already seen a text view. The mo morning session which I showed you the first program which was displaying hello world, that was a text view. 
Now, this is an image view as name suggests, it is a self explanatory. This is a view which will help you to display an image. So, on click of images, I will show you an image view where image is displayed, and on click of video, we will have a video view. Now, in this left hand side, the last widget is a video view. So, what we will do is on click of video, we will have a video view and our video will start playing. So, just do not worry, I mean I'm, I know I am talking a lot, so it may be difficult to grasp, but see this is our first activity and what I will do first is I will just show you the output so that and then we will just revert back. So, my team member has done already work for me, they have uh, connected a pen drive and this was a point where in mor morning which did not work that I wanted to show you how to install an APK on the device. This if you see I have connected, a, I have a connector and connected a pen drive and inserted in the USB port and now let me just zoom in for you, so that you will see the folder clearly. Yeah. So, the third folder is my USB folder and now this is the APK, the, the starting point APK. So, starting point APK. Now, it asks me do you want to install this application, I say install and as I had mentioned in the morning, it will show your dialog box to open. So, I say open. So, yeah, this is what the program we I showed you in the morning. So, it is displaying a hello world. So, if I click on this text gets changed to the starting point. I mean this is a just I wanted to show you to procedure how to install it on the device, but now let us resume back to our image session, where I will show you the output of media example, which I was discussing with you. So, let me just check out my media example, yeah. Okay. So, here are two image buttons as I shown you in the layout, on click of images, this is the image view. So, on, on the image view, I am displaying an image and this is just a, to add a functionality on click of next, the image gets changed on the image view. Okay. The activity is same, it is just that I am changing an image. If you see above, this is an image display activity. Okay. If you come here, see this is the first is the image display activity, if I click on next, this is also image display activity. It is just then programmatically I am changing the picture because I wanted to show you the code that how to set a, a source programmatically. And on click of video, we have this video which is getting played. This is a complete video view what you are see, uh, watching on the screen. And on when, you, when I tap on this, when I tap on this, I get this controller buttons. So, this is happening using media controller. This just gets visible for 3 seconds. So, you can do I mean programmatically it is possible to you know get it as a default, I mean by default the screen will look like this, it is possible. So, when I tap on this, it I mean I get this control, I can just click on this and it works. So, this is our first example and now what we will do is, we will just look into the code of it, I mean very minimal code, not much. So, you have already understood this first this first layout which shows two image buttons. So, what we will do is definitely now we have to go to the Java code because on click of this buttons we want something to happen. So, what we will do is let us go to our main activity. Now, if you see my source fold has three activities other than the media example. Media example is my main activity where two image buttons are shown and there are two more because when I click on image I am starting a different activity which is image display. When I click on video, I am starting a video view which is a video display activity. I mean let us look at the step by step. So, let us go to the media example first. Okay. So, this is my media example activity. What I am simply doing is, I have this two methods, one is a display video and another is display images these methods I have called on those two buttons, which I showed you. And what I am doing on this click of button, I am simply asking the other activity to start. I am using intent. So, that this is the syntax of intent. 
the media example, it needs a current uh, class reference and which activity you want to call. So I am saying under display images, call the image display activity. So it has current reference, that is the media example dot this and the activity which you want to call. And to start the activity, I simply say start activity and, pa and pass the intent object. That's it. I mean, by this, you will start the another activity. Then there you can have an image view and display image and do whatever you want to do. So these are simply two methods. One is calling a display image display activity and another is calling video display activity with exactly same syntax. And I, I will suggest not to go to a syntax level at this point, just try to understand the concepts, how it works, how to get the UI widget work. That's more important. I mean, syntax and everything, once you start doing it, you will automatically understand. Again, I'm coming back to the media example to show two image buttons. And to just show, I have on click, I have called these methods. So display images and display video. And what these methods now are doing for me, they're calling those two activities. So let's go to those two activities and see what is happening there. So let's go to the image display first where we have an image view. So if I click on this, this is the image view one. So I, in the source, I have just set this image by default. And when you click on this next button, I'm changing a source programmatically. So this was attempt to show you both ways to set images. One is just click on this, set your source. If you want a dynamic, uh, dynamic setting of your image, then do it programmatically. So this is, that's it. I mean, on image display activity, I have image view, I have button, and I have to do some programming that by clicking on ne next, change this image. So I'll just go to my image display activity dot Java. So that's it. I mean, I have only this much code. The rest all is a system generated code. So I just have a move next method, which is, which I'm calling on that next button. And the syntax would be same as I've showed you that it should, it should have that parameter view V. That's why I had got uh, that exception in the morning because I didn't pass it. And what the next step should be? Get the reference of image view, get the reference of button. And uh, all right, the button reference I have got just to set the visibility because if you see, when I click on next button, you see the different image, but next button is gone. So activity is same, how can then button would be gone automatically? It's not possible, I have done it programmatically. That's just to show you. Okay, so here is something for your work. It's, I'm getting the reference of image view and on click of this method, on click of the button, my move next will be called and my image view would be now having a different image. So what I have done is image dot set image resource if you see, there are lots of methods available. If you see, I mean, see, set image bitmap from drawable, from resource, there are from you, even URI. So wherever your image is or wherever your resource is, depending on that, you can set, you can have this set method. So my resource is sim in simple, just in drawable folder. So I don't need to do any great logic for it. So I just simply said image dot set image resource and the reference of my image. So this is nothing but r dot drawable dot image, image name basically. So I mean, that's it on image display activity. This is the only code, only there's four lines of code for you. And next let's look at the video display activity. Let's look at the XML first and then we will come to the Java. So in video display activity, I simply have a video view, that's it. Then you may have a question how those controllers are coming. Those controllers are coming using media controller and that is happening through programmatically. Because video view by default don't give you any controllers. You have to program to get those controls. So this is simple a video view. Okay. I have just drag and drop from this and given some uh, you know parameters for alignment. So margin left, top, right, bottom. So it's symmetric from all sides. And what is happening in a Java file? Let's look at that. So this is obviously a system generated code. We don't, we are not getting into that. Yeah. 
So, I mean, you can now even think what should be the steps. You have your video view in a, your XML file, that is in your layout file. So, what should be the case? You should have re reference in the Java file and give the path of, uh, give path of the video where, uh, path where the video is stored. All right, so that's it. I mean, only it's two steps to do it. And third step, it's optional if you want those controls. So that can be achieved using a media controller. So that's it. First step, I'm getting the reference. This is a very, this is a common syntax. You will find it almost everywhere. This is a typecasting, then find view by ID. So whatever you see in that layout, in that XML, that is, you know, under a view. So this is the method which gives you the reference of all those whatever is present on that XML or on that layout file. So it will give you the reference of it and then r.id, your uh, view name, video view name. So I have given it as a video display over there. And I have just set the path of my video as a hard-coded path. Actually, uh, there are lots of other ways to do it. I have just given this comment for your reference that you can set path in different ways. It can be dot URI or it can be from environment dot get external storage and file name or it can be hard coded. There are so many ways to do it. Depends on where you are, uh, what your application is required. For example, if you don't know, uh, don't know already that you know where your video would be present. So depending on that, for example, it can be an internal memory, external memory. So depending on that, you need to I mean, you need to apply the required method. I knew my video would be present in my internal memory, so I have given the path. And this is the third step which I spoke about, which is optional. This is view.setMediaController. This is the step which is giving me those controls of play, forward, backward. So this is a only a single line which is giving me that. There are so many other things in media controller also, for example, uh, I will be soon showing you that by default how the video gets played in the device and what all different controls are available. So that's it and I'm just saying uh, this path that view dot set video path and start playing video. I mean you can see the code is not at all difficult and with this three four lines I'm able to play a video in my application. I mean how cool is that? And I just wanted to show you one more thing. Most of people have already shown you this DDMS perspective. So, all right. To, this is a MNT SD card. Let me just select this first. All right. We will look into this a little later. There should seems to be some issue because it's not showing me the file. So basically, I have, uh, as I have mentioned in my path, I have gone to the DDMS perspective and I have stored my video under MNT SD card folder, as simple as that, because this is important. If you, if you don't have the video in the path where you have set, it won't get played. And you will come up with question, why is it not getting played? So it's a simple logic, your video should be there, whatever path you want to give. So place the video over there, get the path, get the video view reference, set the video path and you are ready to play your video. I mean, it's as simple as that. So that's it about the media example. The one more thing, when you are dealing with a video, it's always better to check with your actual device because the same example, it doesn't run on the emulator because of the video. Because what happens, the video play needs lot of power consumption. And the emulator is not able to support that much. So, you know, the videos which are in very small size, which, you know, which are not of very good quality, those play, uh, those gets played in the emulator. But whenever you are dealing with videos, it's a, it's always, it's mandatory to check it on an actual device. So, let me just see if my application is here on the AVD. Here, then I will show you what I am talking about. Oh, so many applications. Let me just open this media example. Let me just. It's not ch changing its landscape. Yeah, okay. I just pressed Control F11 to change the landscape 
of the emulator okay so when i click on video yeah so this is what i get can't play the video or sometimes what happens is you get your audio but video is not there or sometimes you get lot of delay in your video there is lag so just be careful that you whenever you are dealing with video you always check with the tablet or with the device so let's check go to the two next applications i will show you the output first and then we'll quickly go to the code yeah so okay so next is image capture demo so i'm opening my application okay so what do we have is a image view over here and a button now magic starts when i click on the smile button you just wait and watch what happens if i click on smile now camera has started okay i'm just clicking a pic okay i click on yes i mean accept now this image has been given back to my application and i am able to view it in my application okay and if you see the code this is just almost a four five lines of code to do this much of work this is what i was talking about when i was uh, telling you the android features that you know application reusability application component reusability i don't need to think about the camera accessing i don't need to think about you know how to save the image what to do nothing the camera activity gets called it does its work it gives me the, my data back and i am able i am ready with my data it's as simple as that and similarly i have a video streaming example video capture demo so what happens here so i click on start and if i click on this the video starts if you see here is a timing information let's stop this okay so now i have video if i click on the play that video starts getting played okay i can hear my voice also so completely video gets recorded you see now you will look at my so i accept this and it just shows the path where this video has been stored so my program has now got my video path so i have my video path i can display it in my video view i can do whatever i want and let's then look at the code behind this cool applications let's go to the image capture demo now i quickly run through it because i don't have much time so let's go to the layout layout it very simple i have showed you i just have a simple button and a image view so this is my button let me just zoom it further button and a image view so that once camera clicks its picture and gives me back i want to show, display the image what camera has clicked so let me just go to the source folder where a java code is there where all the magic is there so i have just got the reference of my image view over here then the button so on click of button see this is a different way to implement your on click listener whatever i have till now i have shown you that you know in xml file i click uh, i call that method on click what should happen the method name i specify in xml file this is another way to do it so in a code itself you can do that button dot set on click listener new on click listener and implement the on click method and write code whatever you want to happen inside on click so i mean this way the code little become little bit becomes a complicated that's why i always follow the previous approach so what happens on click a camera should start right so with a similar syntax what we used to call a different activity our custom activity we are just calling a new intent and passing the reference as sorry media store dot action image capture okay so media store is a basically a class where these all constants has been defined action image capture 
video capture and lots of them. So I am just passing that, okay, this is an action which I want camera to perform, that is an image capture. And with similar syntax, you can do a video streaming, but obviously you can guess it quickly that the constant name would differ. That there it would be a video capture. We will look into the code. And next, I just call start activity for result, camera intent and camera request. So if you, if you just observe this, this is a start activity for result. It's not just start activity, which I did in a previous example to call another activity. Why I have called this? You can guess the reason. It's because I expect camera to give me back the result, give me back some output, give me back that picture which camera has clicked. That's why I have called this method. So what we pass here is a camera intent, which is nothing but a intent which uh, where you know we have given reference to the media store constant and the next is a camera request this is just a unique identifier a integer value if you see i have just declared this here this value can be anything okay this is just to identify so that when because see this has said okay you call the camera and then something should happen when uh, the camera activity activity is done its work so what should happen i have to i have to code it definitely that you know image views should have that picture so what i am doing here is i have method which is on activity result which takes this three parameters one is a request code result code and intent data so i have already given this comment here the request code basically determines what type of request uh, i mean this basically this integer identifier which you have, defi you have defined on your own. This is a user defined one, okay. This is not a, that what we did in action, okay. Let me sort out the confusion. Basically, this is an action to be performed by a camera and this camera request is an integer uh, value to identify uh, which request is giving back the result. This is a user defined value. It can be anything, okay. So on on activity result, I am uh, it's it's expecting request code, then the result code. So camera it may be possible you know camera application is not available. Okay, so instead of result underscore okay, it will give me back result underscore cancelled. It can you know say that unfortunately application is closed. So my you know camera activity was not successful to perform its work. So I have to understand in my code that okay my activity was not successful. So accordingly, I have to take some steps. So this is what this result code does. If it was it is successful, it returns result OK. If it's not, result underscore cancelled. And this is the interesting part, intent data. This is what it gives me that picture back. OK, this data object only contains the data depends on the what type of activity you have called. For example, in image, it will give me back the image. In case of video, it can give me a video path, it can give me a complete video also. So that's it, I'm just checking against the request code that okay, whether it is a camera request which I had called and the result, whether result is okay or not. And yes, then just set my image in an image view using the data. I mean simple, very pretty simple syntax, no rocket science logic required. And it is doing so many things for you. So as we are just running out of time, I click, I'll quickly go for my video streaming also. Okay. So video capture demo is a, on, it is on a similar line. In a layout, I have a, I have simple button, simple button, nothing. And I, on click of this, the camera activity starts, the video recording starts. Once it is done, it gives me back the path. So once I have the path, I mean, I have the access to video. I can do whatever I want to do. I mean, play a video, edit a video. So this is a Java code, a very simple one, nothing great. So this basically method gets called when I click on, uh, click on start. You have seen that start button. Let me not confuse you. Let me just show it to you. Let me go to the XML. Yeah. 
So this is the button start and it has on click this method dispatch, dispatch video intent. So what should happen in the, this dispatch video intent? My camera should start video recording. So I have to code of course for that. It won't understand on its own. So I am calling a video recording. So my action now here is action video capture. If you see the syntax is pretty similar. There it was media store dot Im action image capture. Here it is media store dot action video capture. Okay, the syntax is pretty simple. It is just that what your application needs. Depending on that, you need to understand what action to be given. So I have just said that okay, action video capture, and then start activity for result. So there, I have to pass the intent object that which activity should be called, and an integer identifier which will identify my request once I get the result back. So again I have called start activity for result instead of start activity and yeah. So what should happen if once the video recording is done, once camera activity has done its work, I want to have a toast message where the video path would be shown, where the video is getting stored. I have want, I need to do that because otherwise it is of no use. I am just keeping keep on recording videos but if I do not get it back, what is the use? No use, right? So I need that path where it is getting default store. So on activity result, see it is again a sim same syntax that is a request code, result code, intent data. Request code would be your integer identifier of your request. Result code is whether act determines whether activity was successful in doing its work or not. Intent data will give you back the data depends on which activity you have called, what type of activity you have called. So I have simply said that you know data, get my data, it is not required, let me just save this and uh, yeah, so using this data object, I am getting my path. So this data is giving back me the URI and from URI, I am retrieving my path over here. So this is a simple toast message, toast dot make test, uh, make text. It needs the current activities reference. The my uh, this is a URI get path from where I can actually show the path where video is getting stored, and this is just to syntax to show the toast message on the screen. So that's it. I mean, pretty similar syntax what we had in image capture also. And let me just show you where this video gets stored. I mean, it just stores in with its own uh, naming convention. Even programmatically you can do that also, there are in media store there are, uh, there are some uh, methods available using that you can uh, inform that with what video name it should be stored or you can even store it in your SQLite database also, you can specify path where it should be stored. I have not done that because it may add the complexity of the application. So let me just show you where it gets stored, where is my file manager, this is an internal memory. So this is a folder, it is a camera folder. So by default here it stores, if you see it has its own naming convention that VID then date and then I guess a timing information. So you can just rename this also in your code, there are lot of methods, lot of things are available, this is just to give you the kickstart that what all things are possible. So you can just start exploring on this front and yeah I guess that is it from my session.